So yeah. how do you think about maturation and all these personalities that you have? Yeah. What's your take on what it means well, to I would, mature? Okay, the world? okay. Here, here's a way of thinking. I think this is very cool. So imagine that you have a drive to admire. Okay, because you do. Okay. Okay. What do you what, mean, like other people? Or sure, people? just okay. the fact that that exists. Okay. It's like you'll admire someone. It's like, okay. well, yeah. okay, I would say the drive to admire is the manifestation of the instinct to mature. Okay, let me understand that. Yep. Can you have back? Yep. Okay, well, so look, a four year old is going to admire a six year old, all things considered. They'll usually pick someone that's in their zone of proximal development, right? So someone they could be. Yeah. Right? And so now this instinct that compels them to admire right, to copy and to attend to, picks a potential future self that's obtainable and then grips them. Okay, that's the instinct to mature, yeah. right? So th then you could say we've got all these hypothalamic functions that are sub-personalities, but there's a meta-function as well that's also biologically instantiated that drives us towards maturation and integration and integrates all those sub-personalities. And that manifests itself in the experience of admiration and then we admire heroes in books and we admire uh, religious figures and those are all you here's how you make a religious figure it's it's simple you take 10 admirable people and they're the same because they're admirable so they exist in a category you extract out everything that's admirable you sink it into a single personality and you posit that as an ideal and you do that a thousand times you have a savior a savior will emerge out of that